Hey there, everybody. Welcome back live at Drew's house. Another edition. Hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, haven't, uh, well, haven't seen y'all in a couple days. This is all very nice. I hope you had a good marathon Monday. My wife, Sarah, finished the marathon. Very excited about that. An unbelievable time of 4-11-25. Uh, what a great Boston day that was the other day, huh? Red Sox win at night. Marathon during the day. It just felt like normal times again. It was just so cool. Um, today, Red Sox are in the ALCS. It's going to be a bit of a baseball show today. My guest is uh, well, kind of a very big one. Um, we'll get to that in a second. I'm kind of waiting for him to join in right now, so we'll see. Um, but it's going to be a bit of a baseball preview show, which I'm very excited about. Red Sox in the ALCS. Houston, a familiar foe coming to town. Very exciting. Should be a fun extra week, at least, of baseball. I'm all excited about that. A um, lot going on in the world, too. Uh, I mean, we had the marathon the other day, which was great. Uh, of course, the sports world is just is buzzing right now. You get the Patriots back, Patriots and Cowboys this weekend. Um, you get the Celtics and Bruins starting up, and all these buildings are full. It's just kind of cool to see uh, post-pandemic and all that. So uh, we hope you're all having a good fall. The, the Halloween is coming up. We heard Dr. Fauci talk about how there's uh, the ability to go trick-or-treating, go enjoy it, be smart, that sort of thing. Um, I've been watching the Kyrie Irving thing, Kyrie Irving not getting vaccinated. That's the last thing I saw here before I came on, uh, which is just bizarre. New York, you need to have a vaccine. He plays for Brooklyn, and obviously that's a problem. So they said, come back when you get vaccinated or come back when this is all over. But at the moment, we can't have you. That's a very interesting situation and uh, kind of a, a troubling one. It seems that most people I know are vaccinated. I definitely, I definitely do know people who are not vaccinated, though. Um, and they all have their have their reasons. Uh, I haven't really heard any good ones yet. Um, I don't know. I guess I just trust the science in that regard. But uh, anyway, today, just a baseball show today. Very excited about this. The Red Sox, man. Most people had them picked like fourth in the division. They end up winning the wild card, second in the division, and then they beat the team that won the division, Tampa, the other day. What a series that was. Fenway Park, uh, I didn't get to any of these games. I haven't been into Fenway at all. Uh, during the since the pandemic, which is just very unlike me. Obviously, nobody could go during the pandemic, but uh, I just haven't been in there in a while, and I was not in there for any of the playoff games. But man, what a series that was! Just Fenway seemed electric uh, for that Rays series. I think Tampa. You heard some of the Red Sox players had heard that Tampa Bay had bought the champagne already and had it shipped to Boston and all that. Uh, whoops! Talk about extra motivation. That reminded me of remember when. Bill Belichick for the first Super Bowl went out and said uh, the, the the parade route had already been planned by the Rams and everything. That's what that reminded me of. Uh, coaches will use anything to get a little bit of extra motivation, won't they? But uh, great win by the Red Sox. And I mean, here they are. Now they get a series first Houston. A lot going on in this series. You get the Alex Cora, former bench coach. You get that Houston cheating scandal, which Cora was there for. Uh, Houston players have been getting booed like crazy. I would think maybe they don't, they don't get booed as much in Boston like for that because your manager happened to be caught up in it. I don't know. Um, I think we're, maybe we just move on from that. But it should be a good series. Houston's a great team. They've proven that. They knocked off the White Sox to get here. And now the Red Sox. Here we go. Uh, chance to make some noise and chance to four wins away from a World Series, which is just crazy. Um, and say what you want about Alex Cora. I, you know, maybe you haven't forgiven him. I have. I think he made a mistake, and it happens. Uh, but uh, I, I, I just thought he's – I think he's a really real guy. And him crying on the field the other day with his adult daughter and after what was a tough couple of years, uh, I just thought was really cool. And it's a fun team to watch. I, everybody keeps telling me baseball's dead around here. I think we've proven that is not true. Fenway was electric the other night. Still a baseball city through and through when it is all said and done. So – uh, on that note, why don't we get to my first guest here as we talk about a baseball city. Uh, bring him in here in just a moment. All right, and now I bring in my guest. I told you he was a big one. You'll recognize his face right here. Big Poppy, David Ortiz, legendary Boston Red Sox slugger. slugger. And uh, we're joined by TJ Freeborn, uh, Chief Administrative Officer at Lone Depot. How are you, you two? I'm doing good. I'm great. She looks great. So I think uh, uh, we are doing really well. <laughs> all right. So David Ortiz, first of all, uh, let's start with you. What a pleasure. It is October in Boston. Uh, we just had a Boston Marathon, which was kind of weird this time of year. But let me tell you, 
the Fenway Park felt uh, electric the other night. Red Sox playing great ball again. Things feel good around here. Man, I'm telling you, whenever I see the Red Sox doing their thing, he made me feel good because he just connect me with what I did while I play. And, uh, you know, I still work for the Red Sox. And what's better than just seeing your team that you work for continue doing, uh, being successful. Do you, does it still give you chills when you see an electric place like that the other night? I mean, those crowds were crazy for those playoff games. I mean, does it bring you right back? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, Fenway is Fenway. I mean, there's no place that you can compare to Fenway. I mean, the, the fans, the way everybody uh, 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 is always cheering for their ball club, you know, the support. I mean, I think New England, when it, New England, when it comes down to sport, they, they have the best fan space. They got a chance of winning this thing, you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They got a pretty good chance. I mean, you saw what they did with the Yankees the other day, and, and now going through the series against Tampa, who had the best pitching uh, in baseball. I mean, seems like the chances are pretty good. All right. We see the baseball, baseball up there. TJ, tell me a little bit about what's going on with Lone Depot partnering with Major League Baseball. Some great stuff going on. Tell me all about it. There is some great stuff going on. We've partnered with Major League Baseball in 2021 for our Home Means Everything RBI campaign. I'm thrilled to say so far this year, we've donated more than $550,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America to help kiddos reach their full potential. And it's getting even more exciting through the League Championship Series as we've upped that and we're donating $1,000 for every RBI during the ALCS and the NLCS. We're, we're thrilled. Hmm. All right, so we'll root for lots of offense there, David. How about that? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> be like, the third big coach needs to be like that the whole time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful. Sending guys home. <laughs> That's right. I was, why? hey, you're so, I just mentioned the marathon too, because I know uh, this happened at a weird time, but this just went down. My wife just ran the Boston Marathon, her first one. Uh, she's all excited about that and still a little bit sore. I was in the ballpark the day you grabbed the mic and kind of, uh, just took over this city. Uh, tell me a little bit, what do you remember about that day, grabbing the mic and just addressing the city the way you did? I'll tell you what, I was, at that moment, I basically wasn't a ball player at the time. I was uh, just another citizen that was angry with the way everything was going down. I mean, the marathon is something that is very special for everybody uh, worldwide. And just having that incident happen, I mean, some people lose their life. Uh, a lot of people was injured, you know, just just, just the whole scene uh, at the time, it kind of, it was, it was very frustrating. So I, I, I would say that what I did, any other citizen would get it done um, the same way. I don't know about that. You had a, you had a certain emotion behind that. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, I've never, just I've never been in a place where just somebody uh, somebody said something that just nobody was expecting that moment to happen, and it just seems so natural. I think I'm right to say you didn't plan on really doing that, right? I've heard you talk about this before, but what was the deal with that again? No, I mean, you know, I was one of the players that was on the team, on the team the longest, so they just want me to go out there and, and you know, you know, I'm the type of person that I'm good at connecting with the fans and and other type of stuff. So they just aware me like five minutes before, like, hey, can you go out there and say something to the fan? And 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 I basically say what I was feeling like, you know what I'm saying? I was I was in Boston when everything went down. I was rehabbing because I wasn't with the team. The team was on the road uh, playing and come back three days later. But I was there because I was, I have, I have an injury that I was rehabbing and I was gonna join the team when they get back in town. So. I, I, I live everything. I saw everything, and, 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 and it was something that impacted me big time. Absolutely. You were just talking uh, like a guy who lives here, and I think that's why it connected so much with, uh, with so many people. And just a, It was a great moment, for, great moment to be in the park that day. I'll, I'll never forget it. Um, as we talk about the, uh, to the playoffs, too, a little bit, what's it like playing these playoff baseball games? How did you become such a clutch hitter? How did you stay calm in those moments? I mean, you literally I – was, I was going through – I guess high school when you guys won the first one, uh, you know, I was, I'm a little bit younger. So I was going through high school. I think you literally made a, uh, there are my younger cousins do not remember a time where you were not getting clutch hits. It's crazy. 
Yeah, I mean, the playoff for uh, playing in October is, is something that is more complicated than what people think it is. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, people always expect you to come through. There's a lot of uh, critical situation. I mean, you can go off for 20 in a heartbeat. It's only, all it takes is like three or four games for you to be there. And once you are there, you know, people just, you know, start going crazy about your production. You know, I was kind of blessed that I was able to produce more likely during the playoff uh, during October. But, you know, your mindset got to be right, your discipline, uh, your ideas, your homework, the way you get it done. I mean, it's a combination of, of a lot of things. And if you let escape one of them, it, things can get complicated, you know. But I was able to... Uh, emotionally, you know, stabilize myself and uh, being able to um, come through in, in some of those important moments. So uh, I'm watching the playoff right now and I'm watching guy like Kiki Hernandez doing his thing, uh, Dever, uh, JD, Martin. I mean, those guys are coming through right when their team need it and that's what is important. Absolutely. Do you, what's the one that, what's the hit that brings you the most joy when you look back on it? Was it that Grand Slam when uh, I think it was your, was your buddy uh, Tory Hunter went flying into the bullpen, right? Uh, I, I got some good hits. I got some good hits. I'm not going to lie to you. But what, what that, that Grand Slam, you know, cement pretty much a lot of things because it was at the, at the very right time. And by the way, that kind of like changed the momentum uh, against those Tigers that they were dominating the the uh the series at the time and was that Mario you got Mariano too was that just a grind I mean nobody thinks they got Mariano you're never in the box going all right I've seen a few pitches I got this guy right Mariano was very unique and special you know and, and, and he was the type of guy that it, it was hard to face you know and being able to come through against him in some moments uh that's something that that was very special too you're, uh, you're, you're here doing a bunch of TV spots today. Uh, you're great on TV, by the way. I've seen you do a lot of the pre and post games. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank Pretty you. much with anything you do. What's, that, what's it mean to be a part of the, uh, the team here with Lone Depot now and doing all this? Yeah. What, what do you look for when you're choosing a partner in this sort of stuff? Help. Helping, helping children, you know, Boys and Girls Club is, is very special to me. I'm very attached to it. And uh, because to me, uh, Children are the future of what we are, you know what I'm saying? And, and having Lone Depot, you know, as a partner, donating money during the regular season, now during the playoff, uh, is something that uh, to me is very important because that's the way, uh, raising money is the way that we can help them at whatever they need, you know what I'm saying? So uh, this campaign is, is, is very special to me. And we're thrilled to have you be a part of it, helping us, helping Lone Depot help children reach their full potential. It means a lot. Without a doubt. TJ Freeborn, this is not a bad guy to have when you're uh, talking about a Red Sox series in the ALCS, you know. I, I've been learning a lot today as I've been sitting with Poppy, <laughs> and um, we're, I think we're both cheering, as you said, for a lot of offense through the AL and NLCS so that we can, we can help the Boys and Girls Club of America. Very there good. You go. Uh, David, what, what would you tell these first-time guys? There's a lot of young guys on this Red Sox team that are kind of uh, seeing this, feeling this atmosphere for the first time, never mind coming off a year where they were playing in empty stadiums during a pandemic. I mean, this is, this is legitimately new to a lot of these guys. How, what would you tell them to calm the nerves and how to get them to just play ball? Don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. You know, it's a teamwork. So everybody needs to have each other back. Everybody, you have a manager who is a genius, uh, like Alex Cora. He is a guy that know every single aspect and detail uh, of the game. So he's, he's, he's the one guy to follow up and, and get to learn whatever as a young player they need. So they have the best manager and they're in the best situation. Is that, well, I heard one of the players say the other day, what makes him different is he never gets overwhelmed by the moment. Is that pretty much the right tone right there? Exactly. That's exactly the way to go. You know, it never gets old. And, you know, he, he makes a huge difference. Alex, Alex Cora makes a huge difference uh, for that organization. 
Are you worried? You mentioned Raphael Devers earlier. Are you a little worried about him? I'm not, I'm not liking that hand coming off the bat on that follow through. You know, by this time of the year, everybody's a little banged up, and he's he's that's he's one of those guys who is battling through injuries and and, and trying not to get himself out of the line. So, uh, I'm expecting him. I have a conversation with him the other day. I basically told him that doing less is it'll be better for him. I know he had that that aggressive swing like I used to, but uh, he need to all, or he also need to be concerned about that injury that he have and make sure that uh, he do less. He also knows how to use that wall like he used to. Exactly. <laughs> What's it uh, with Fenway Park this time of year, playoff games? I mean, you've seen the whole league. You've been in every ballpark. There's something different about Fenway, and there's something different about Boston this time of year, isn't there? The fans, man. The fans make that different. You know, they when you play at Fenway, as a player, you feel like the fans are playing right there with you because everything feels like it's on top of you. That's one thing that I love the most about playing at home. I know that I, uh, uh, when I was at the play hitting, I had this fan base it feel like 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 they were hitting out there with me, you know what I'm saying? They were always cheering and supporting, you know, it's something that I never forget. What's your favorite road ball, ball park to hit in? Was there another one that jumps out at you? You always saw the ball well? I I, I always I always do love uh, hitting in New York. Really? New York, yeah, New York was the one place that I always look forward to go and play. You just you just like a good rivalry. It, oh, I love it. I love it. That was my thing. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it would be fun. Uh, these guys, you, you mentioned it's a great manager. It's a, it's a great ball to, ball club, but you need some pitching too. You like where this team's at pitching-wise? Or? Yeah, yeah. I think Sale, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be better this next round. Uh, Ubaldi, Eduardo sh showed me the other day that uh, he's right on, you know. So if, if, we, if we have a bullpen coming through, during the next series because we're going to need some pitching because Houston offense is really good. So uh, the pitching is going to be to step up and, 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 and get things done. Well, uh, well, David Ortiz, man, what an honor it's been talking with you. Thank you for all the clutch hits and all the joy you brought to this area over the years, man. And uh, it's cool to see you around so much too and sticking here. You're just, uh, just one of us and it's just great. Thank you very much. DJ, thanks for coming on. It's a great thing you guys are doing, raising all this money for a great cause, and uh, you guys make a great team. Thank you so much. Well, how about that? Pretty cool, huh? Big poppy David Ortiz to get you ready for the uh, ALCS. There you go. Hope you all enjoyed that. Kind of fell on my lap a little bit, and I decided to run with it. Very good. And TJ Freeborn, Lone Depot, they're doing some stuff. You're going to see a lot of that during the ALCS uh, sponsors and logos and raising money and all that good stuff. Uh, Loan Depot and MLB, uh, ALCS and NLCS are doing that home means everything campaign. Um, each RBI resulting in a 1000 donations, $1,000 donation to the boys and girls club of America. And uh, as you heard David say there, it's all about the kids. That's what he has always been about. And that's what he wants it to be about. And there you go. So uh, Friday night baseball, Red Sox, Houston Astros. And, um, yeah, that's about as good as I can do. I can get David Ortiz on to preview this series, huh? Uh, how about that? Um, yeah, great on TV, too. You'll see him. I think he's probably doing – I'm not sure who has the – actually, I think it's Fox maybe. Or, does TNT have any games? I'm not sure exactly who, who's doing all the coverage, but he's been great on TBS. TBS has been doing a lot of the games, and uh, David Ortiz has just been fantastic on TV. He's one of those guys that I think is just – people just love him. You know, he's personable and uh, – you know, he's just good on TV. He's, like, he's one of those guys you knew would be good at pretty much anything he does. So all the commercials he does, all the pregame and postgame stuff, David Ortiz just does everything well. My, I can't even think of all the big hits he had. I remember that Yankee series when they're down 3 nothing, He got the big game tying single and then the home run later. And, oh, man, he just had clutch hit after clutch hit. I mentioned the home run where Torrey Hunter went falling into the bullpen a couple years later uh, with the Tigers. That I think that was – what was that? I just saw the. It was like eight years ago, I think. Twenty. Yeah, that would have been the twenty. That would have been the you know Shane Victorino team and everything. I think it was like eight years ago. Uh, the other night, I, they were showing a bunch of highlights of it. And uh, man, it's a baseball city right now again, right? It's always been a baseball city, Boston, but especially right now. Um, 
and it's just picking up. I just love to see this coming out of a pandemic, just the Red Sox fans packing Fenway Park going crazy, and it's just uh, a whole lot of fun. Um, one more time, I'm just going to mention this because uh, I'm just very proud of what my wife did the other day. Four hours and 11 minutes, I uh, did the Boston Marathon. Um, something tells me she might even have the bug and want to do it again at this point because uh, it was just a great run for her and that was four she think i think she thinks it's four hours four hours and 11 minutes she was saying hi to all of us and you know had to use could use the bathroom once or twice i think she thinks she can get it under four hours which she probably can she's unbelievable but uh congratulations to my wife sarah conway uh first boston marathon it's a lot of training it's a lot of hard work it's a lot of time put in i got to see a lot of it firsthand here and uh a, a whole lot of her friends who did it too shayla o'connell who was on the show the other day uh, also in the marathon and finished, did great. Congratulations, Shayla. Um, congratulations to everybody who did the Boston Marathon. And that was just such an awesome day the other day. Um, be beautiful weather. Uh, people were outside having fun. Uh, you know, the bars were packed on the side of the road. People were just celebrating. I, one thing I love about the marathon, you just walk by down the street, you see somebody who maybe ran it, you give them a fist pump, everybody just smiling, they're supporting each other. That's the kind of day Marathon Monday is in Boston. So just very cool to see. And uh, of course, talking with David about Marathon Monday because he had one of the epic Boston Marathon moments with his speech that day. And I'm serious, man. That that I was in the ballpark for that morning baseball game when he grabbed the microphone after the marathon bombings. And oh, talk about pins and needles. That was just an emotional day. And like you said, they asked him, you know, five minutes before to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if all of you had heard that story before, but uh, absolutely unbelievable. David Ortiz grabs that microphone and just uh, takes the city by storm. So uh, with just a, a really emotional, you just felt that he, you knew he meant it. He just a, a resident of the city here, uh, just talking about the pain the city was feeling that day. And it just really, that cheer, that eruption that he got when he said that epic line, this is our city, you know? Uh, what a guy, what a legend. David Ortiz, and thank you to TJ Freeborn, Loan Depot, uh, Big Poppy, one of the bigger guests we've had on the show here. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. That's going to be our baseball little ALCS preview show. I tried to do the best I could. David Ortiz, there you go, all right? Live from Drew's house. Peace.